Today, look at iPerf, the speed between two very fast Xeon D machines. They also have 10 gig between them. So this should be pretty interesting. And there you go, you'll see 10 gig interface negotiated there, private network with a nice short one foot CAT6A cable. I could have used CAT7 as well. There you have it, that's the setup. If you want to know a little more about the processor, you can find that out here in the gigahertz and the specs. All right, there's one machine. And there's the other machine. So identical machines, both with this super speedy M.2 device laying down on the motherboard. iPerf, you get from here, the source, and you download it. So I've already downloaded it just before rolling the camera here. Next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is extract it. And the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is go to the extracted folder, select that folder, hold down shift, right click, and open command window here. Convenient way to drop yourself right to where you want to be. I'm going to go ahead and maximize that window for you. Now I'm not using remote desktop connection, I'm using something called IKVM, it's out of band uh, connection. That way there's no other network traffic. How do you know that's true? Well, if we have a look here at Task Manager, we'll see the ethernet is doing absolutely nothing at the moment. Um, so yeah, that's good. We can actually leave that running on both. If we minimize it, it'll sit in the tray and that can be our little bandwidth thing. All right, over here, select the folder, hold down shift, right click, and open command window here, maximize the window. Okay, so we start with the server with iperf. If you do a dir, you can see the files, right? iperf3, iperf3, dash s for server. You get a firewall pop up. Do I want to allow it on a private network? Well, let's just double check them on a private network. The answer is yes. So I can just say, okay, ac allow access for private networks only. If it showed public network, you could turn that on and make sure iperf would work for you. As long as they're on a local subnet, even if it's identified as public, you'd still be good. Okay, same deal over here, but iperf3-c for client, and then the IP address of the machine on the right. So I could do something like this, Windows plus R, drop to a command line, and show you that this is the machine we want to connect to. And there it goes. Network is hitting 25% on both. That was pretty incredible. <laughs> so there's our iperf results. I'm gonna run it a second time. I wanna watch Ethan at this time while it's running. Let's see if we can kind of run that in a half screen mode. And eh, not really, not terribly effectively. No, it's not gonna work. Just gonna maximize it, all right. Same thing here, or nearly maximize it, I guess. All right, that should work. It's good enough. So all we can do is up arrow here, and we don't really need to see the task viewer on both sides, or the CPU, but I kinda want to, because I wanna know if the, CP the CPU is doing anything too. So I'm gonna hit enter and double click here and now we can see CPU is very low, 6% in the right, 2% in the left. And this is the fastest traffic I've ever seen on uh, any computer I've owned in my home. <laughs> it's a pretty exciting moment for me to see those kind of numbers. Uh, finally breaking the, the one gig barrier where the most you would get would be 
800 uh, megabits or so. Gosh, I just want to do that again. I'm quite enjoying the Samsung 950s. Here it is. An astounding 2.7 matching on both sides and incredibly low CPU utilization. So I'd say these are pretty fantastic uh, iPerf results from a CPU and raw throughput perspective on two machines running Windows 10 and not much else. And when I say not much else, I mean the CPU settles to 0% when we're not doing anything. Okay, I do have a couple little things running. Veeam endpoint happened to be running, but it wasn't doing anything. And of course, you're going to get the same results every time because this machine is hardly breathing hard to run these tests. The curves are nicely shaped. Ramp up, ramp down, you don't get some drops. Like buffering, overrun kind of issues where you get this jumpy stuff going on that you used to get in the old jumbo frame tuning days of the early one gig world. 2.51, 2.52, scroll up. Awfully similar results. What do you see on the right? It just keeps listening a server and it echoes the same stuff for you. So super simple tool. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And thank you for watching and for visiting tinkertry.com.